Hopefully the lighting will be okay. Kind of dampled sunlight for this next step. And so this is going to be a bowl, an Osage bowl. I still have a, barely any work to get it down to one growth ring, but I'm almost there. At this stage, I've got it a constant three quarters of an inch thick, which is more than thick enough. Give me some leeway to do it. And what I'm doing now is just removing the wood. Hopefully you can see those pencil lines that I have drawn on there following the gags. Now, the first note, the first note of consequence is that when I do these lines on the bows, I follow the snakes, but these lines are only a guide because I am following the fibers along the side of the bow, which is the important part, but I still want to get it to the dimensions of this. This is a very minor taper to this point, and then it gets taperier. And I drew this out with a basically just a measuring stick, a metal edged measuring stick, a metal, a metal measuring stick with metal edges. Um, in the past, I should also mention that my scribomatic here that I used to draw thicknesses, I didn't have it always. In the beginning, I would literally take a piece of cardstock, and sometimes I'd have to glue it together if it was a 36 inch piece, to make it long enough for a little more than half the length of the bow, because I want this thing to pass beyond the handle, and then have them match up. This match up with the lines I draw on this side. I used to use this for a thickness template too. I would get a thickness, handle section, and then the thickness I was aiming for, for the tip, and I'd draw a line, and then I'd measure it, what I want, you know, how thick do I want it at the tip, and thick at the handle, and then draw another line, cut it out with scissors, and follow it, and I've done this with snaky bows, along the edge of the bow, and then taking my pencil and drawing that on there. Again, just as a guide. I don't get right to the pencil line because maybe I didn't do a perfect job on here. I want to get it close and then use the growth ring pattern on the belly of the bow. I keep talking about that, but you have to picture a topographic map with the elevation lines. It works the same way on a bow, provided you don't have the knots because they will cause swirls, you know, and this, that, and the other thing, etc., and whatnot. And then I Started, I made one of these things and it really made things easier. Now, this end is not as snaky as that end, but here's how I do it. I'm going to pretend that this is against the bow, right? And I'm just going to do it like in segments along here. Like I'm driving. I, I get it lined up, centering it, because I did use a draw knife on this thing to get it originally before I drew these lines for this on the bow I used a draw knife to get the whole bow kind of a consistent width following the fibers right and so I'll take this and hopefully you can see this I'll draw a pencil line I already drew my pencil lines I'm centered just in this section it's about three inches long boink boink now it a curve is coming up so I pinch this so it rotates and looking so the lines um, will meet on the side because I want the lines to be continuous I'll start turning it a little bit and draw a short section equal length on both sides I draw a two inch line here and a two inch line in length here and then I rotate it more draw draw short section at the time until I get this shape that's following the curves. Now again, I can't stress this enough, bow making friends, is that this is just a guide. Perhaps I wasn't perfectly following the curvature of the bow, following the lay of the fibers, and I will see that when I start draw knifing it. I'm gonna pull this off the bench again. I did this side. And you can see 
that when I drew <laughs> drew knifed it, it didn't work out. Now it's easier than you think because fibers are going this way. They're not following my taper and I am leaving fibers and entering new fibers, draw knifing it this way and not into the fibers. And it could be a little deceptive, but I can still see, even though I'm entering new fiber zones as I narrow, I still see that, yeah, that worked out pretty good. I was pretty close. Now you have to be uber careful when you're draw knifing it where it gets parallel because you risk tear out. If you weren't perfect, and no one's perfect really, in doing draw knifing it along this before you drew your pencil lines, you do risk getting tear out here. So you gotta be very careful. And when I draw a knife in that zone where it is parallel and I risk getting tear out on the sides, I, I basically draw a knife very slowly in short, short bursts, not <clears throat> like that, but just short bursts so I can see if I'm going to get tear out. And if I am, fight that urge. Fight the natural inclination of guys that say, I'm going to keep going because it'll get better. No, you stop dead. And either remove the draw knife from your hands so you're not tempted to keep going and getting tear out, maybe sanding it or something to get rid of that lifted from the draw knife fiber that could go inside your lines. You'd be able to stop yourself, I know. It's hard. But I will draw knife it, leaving about that margin. Can you see that? Maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. And I might use, again, purists will cringe when I say this, maybe an orbital disc sander. I love my orbital disc sander to, to get it right to the lines. Or maybe I can carefully um, draw knife it in, but I need to be darn careful or I could goof up my bow and suddenly have to make a narrower bow. When you get within a sixteenth of an inch, like in this bow, be careful. Now, this one was a little easier. And you can see I've got a little work on the back to do, but it's of not, no consequence. That crack right there, right there, is going to be gone. So I'm going to eat up a little bit of time here so you get your money's worth. I keep slipping into Dennis Hopper and Apocalypse now. It was a good bow. It was an Osage bow. Nobody understands it, man. But anyway, this is also a good time because it kind of twists and it's ginky. It's roller coastery, which I mean, when you're looking at the side, not the face, it's kind of roller coastery. And it's kind of twisty when you're looking right directly at it if I was going to shoot you. <laughs> which I'm not, I'm a nice guy. Um, but this is a good time to be really careful. And what I'm doing now is doing my best to get a 90 degree angle between the side and the face, because it wasn't perfect before. That's what I mean. I don't have a super sharp draw knife. But these little chopping Strokes, I don't need to do that. I could do long ones and like get skewered in the gut with a bow. Yeah, it's dull. But I like these when you go in here, little short chopping, so you can stop it before you get tear out. And I'm looking at this and looking at this, making sure I'm not like going inside a line if I had it in the back. I want 90 degrees to the back, and it's hard when it's propeller twisted. There, I have done eliminated that crack. Yeah, that's darn near perfect 90 degrees right there, Homer. And I can actually, you're saying I'm going from one level of fibers to the next, and so I don't know if I'm actually fi following the fibers tip to tip. But when I'm doing this, at, and not tapering it, but then leveling off and following the lay of the fibers, because picture it, this orientation, both sitting here like this, you're looking at the face, 
I'm working the sides, I can, every so often, level it off and go with the fibers, and now I'm seeing where the natural snakes are. See? Again, this is just getting close and learning the bow. This is very esoteric. This is very hypothetical. As you're working a bow out of a bigger piece of wood, you're learning about that piece of wood. You're learning about... I keep thinking, oh, I like moonlights along the beach, and I like romantic music and a bottle of Chablis. No, you're learning about the fibers in the bow, the ganks, the little pin knots. You're learning about everything. In absorbing, as you get closer and closer to the finished bow, you have less of a margin of error. And so hopefully it's gonna like, and now you've learned the bow and you, you hit that margin of error and now you're finishing it. Wow, that's deep. Let's talk about motorcycles. Behind me, you see this mighty 1980 Honda CB125S. And again, the S stands for super fast. It's got a top speed of, they say, 75 miles an hour. It's hard to believe that a human being can can survive the speed of 75 miles an hour. The Suzuki 100, 68. Um, I don't know what the SR500 is faster than I want to go because I'm my own mechanic. But this thing, all it needs is a stinking ignition coil. And you would be surprised if you've never worked on old vehicles. Some of you had sourcing this stuff. I put a whole a halt to the Suzuki 125. Because I need the stator, I need the flywheel, I need the points, which go wet on a whole lot of bikes. The TC100 right there shares the same points as the 125, but it doesn't share the same stator and, and, and flywheel, which would be nice because I've got another TC100 motor that has a good stator and flywheel on it. But these things are almost impossible to get, and that is pricey. I estimate to finish that TS100 or 125, it would probably cost me $1,500 in bits and pieces. And I can't afford that right now. But I can hopefully find a stinking coil for this. And the only other bike shared the same coil as this 1980, of course, CB125S, is a 1979 XL175 or some obscure motorcycle like that. You know, it was a specialized thing, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, back to bows. I noticed that I got a little off kilter here. That is 90 degrees, and I didn't work right down, so I'm going to get it there. There, I didn't go inside my lines, and I got it back to 90 degrees. This is another thing, too. Well, at this point, when this is three quarters of an inch thick, I don't want to get it right to my lines. Is that uh, I want to have some margin of error to adjust that angle right there between, betwixt the sides and the back. And if I get it right to the lines, I'm stuck with whatever angle I've developed here. However, when I thin it, and I get a little bit of the propeller twist out or all of it and straighten it out, then it'll be much easier. And plus, when it's thinner, I can have it ah, off my workbench in... I don't mind sanding that, you know, a sixteenth of an inch off of that, especially with the orbital disc sander. It works fast especially when it's thinned out to almost its final thinness. Well, that's it. I talked enough. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you gained something from this. Templates. Only a guide. It's not like I'm building a cabinet, and it has to be follow that exactly. It's a bow. It's a bow.